And the players are now taking the field as we get ready to go. Looks like Chattanooga will be in possession of the ball first. And we're off. So we're going to see what Chattanooga's strategy is here um, as, as this game begins. Because uh, we usually are in the feeling out period now, but uh, as Alex mentioned before, feeling out the field. Right, yeah. It's going to be different for a lot of these players. A lot of them are used to playing on an uh, artificial surface like they have here today, but the rain has added a new characteristic to that surface, and not only do you have to fill out the other team now, you have to fill out the field con conditions, and there was almost a goal there by Sam Babian. Yeah, she ran that one down in the corner of the goal and somehow kept it in bounds, but this will wind up being a goal kick for Peachtree City. This matchup, uh, table-wise, is very interesting. Peachtree City are second, and Chattanooga FC are first, so it's first versus second in the division here today. So a big game. Peachtree City Moba pushing the ball up the field. That one's going to bounce off of the foot of Alexa Barr. It'll be a throw in for Chattanooga. Lizzie Shaughnessy throwing in. Chattanooga FC in their powder blue shorts and white jerseys. Peachtree City in black shorts and yellow jerseys. So we've had the, this point in the season where a lot of uh, these teams are familiar as Peachtree City tries to attack the net. And a lot of these teams are familiar with each other, but Peachtree City and Chattanooga have not played yet this season. So Peachtree City throws this one in. And a great, a great pass over the top. Gathered by Summer Lancer. Lancer's gonna try and pass it across a little bit too far but it's run down. So Chattanooga being aggressive early. Goal kick for Peachtree City. gathered by Alyssa Beck. It's in midfield. Uh, Peachtree City trying to find their spacing. How important is spacing, Alex? Uh, it depends on what tactic you're going for. And from the looks of things, Peachtree City is going for a very possession, build-out style play. And that's when you need the spacing. You need to have open areas so your forwards and your midfielders can get on the ball and they can end up getting shots away from those um, open spaces. But it, it was the opposite and they were going for a very direct style of play. Spacing still is an important characteristic of that, but it's more of the forwards finding the space and the runs they're making behind the line and not so much midfield spacing. Ball bouncing around midfield. So would you say that Chattanooga is using more of a direct style of attacking? Usually, yeah. And 
You can tell by their the way their forwards are running off the ball, especially. They're looking for those over the top three balls that we're seeing here. And Chattanooga, both the men's and women's team, have that style of play, and they found a lot of success in that style of play. Chattanooga currently unbeaten in their season for the women's team. The men's team falling short of that record last night. But they have that very direct style of attacking, and it's a good style to have, especially in this kind of uh, play so or soccer play. So Peachtree City having some trouble moving the ball around as they got into the box. And one thing about them is that when they are attacking, their whole team is up the field. So that could leave them open to some kind of counter. Quite possibly. Yeah, and that idea is pretty bittersweet because you have the uh, uh, opportunity as a defending team to counterattack when the full team's pushing up, but it gives them so many more passing options for a team if they press up with the whole team and drop back with the whole team instead of just their forwards or their forwards and a couple of attacking midfielders. Peachtree City along the far sideline trying to run down the ball is Melanie McCoy. And Davian swoops in and takes it. And that'll be a throw in for Chattanooga as Peachtree City kicks it out, taking it away from Ruth Rosales. Davian with the athletic kick over to Carly Banks from Peachtree City comes away with it. Kelly McKay passes it over to Alexa Barr. Barr's going to run down the near sideline. She's going to get behind the defense. And she's going to try and cross, and it's broken up. Pushes it upfield to Shaughnessy. Rosales comes away with it. Pushes it across the far sideline. Chattanooga reversing field. And that'll be a throw in for Chattanooga. Pass the Summer Lantern taken away, but Chattanooga is able to recover, crossing midfield to Rosales. She's going to push it up to Davian. Davian's on side. Trying to work the angle, and she gets pushed off the ball by McKay, but that'll be a corner for Chattanooga FC. Gonzalez kicks it in and getting her head on it. Looks like uh, and Rosales takes it away. Looked like Hayes got her head on that shot there, and it was a pretty good look. It looked from here like Davian ended up getting in the way of it and defending for the right. issue at the time. It's she was in position in case the ball was a bit closer to goal, and she was in a good position. It was just unfortunate for Hayes that she was in that position. Rosales running this one down. So much of what this offense does starts with her. 
Yeah, she's a very key figure in the midfield for the CSC women's team, making the passes and passing is what I've been extremely impressed with by her. She knows where she's going as soon as she gets the ball at her feet and almost 100% of the time she plays a crisp, clean pass to the feet or to the head or to the run of any other player. Pass left behind, the left short, taken away by Peachtree City Moba. This will be a throw in for Chattanooga on the far sideline. Anna Lanter will throw it in. Shaughnessy on the near sideline tries to skip it ahead to Dabian. Taken away. Kelly McKay kicks it, bounces off the foot of Davian. Davian's moving backwards. Rosala puts Rosales puts it over the top of Shaughnessy and just a little too far. That'll be scooped up by Peach Tree City. So Chattanooga is dominating the ball here in the first half. Why is that important? It allows you to open up different things. Instead of just going straight forward through one player, they have multiple options up top, and their midfield is possessing very well at the moment, which allows them to switch the field, make passes, and it really just frustrates any opposition, which when that happens, it's going to lead to more fouls called, as we see there, a free kick in a very dangerous area. And... It's very demoralizing when you have to constantly chase a ball being passed around by a very good team, and Chattanooga is doing that to Peachy at the moment. So I would see a lot of subs being made, especially in the latter parts of the second half if this kind of possession keeps up, because a lot of tire legs will be chasing the ball back and forth with Chattanooga's passing game. This one is kicked in by Banks. It's going to go over the top of the net. And just having the ball more gives you more opportunities to score. Right, yeah. Uh, and when you have those opportunities, if you have a bunch of shots, chances are at least one of those will end up going in. So look for Chattanooga to keep this possession up and make a lot of efforts going forward with that possession. Shaughnessy's going to get this one as it rolls backwards, pass over the top of everyone, it's going to bounce to Peachtree City. This will be a Chattanooga throw-in. Hudgens is going to be knocked off the ball. Pass up ahead to Davian, and Davian wisely passing it up again. She's going to run it down herself. And that was good defense by Peachtree City to try and keep that away from Davian, who is incredibly fast, especially along the sidelines. This will be Shaughnessy with a Chattanooga throw-in. Now Peachtree City. Play stops. Chattanooga saying the ball was not actually thrown in bounds. It hit the sideline and rolled out. And good defense by Chattanooga FC. 
Julio Gonzalez uh, pushes the ball up the field here. What have you seen from the defense of uh, Chattanooga? Uh, they're very defensively sound, as always. Interesting, you mentioned that. I was reading up on one of the posts by the Women's Premier Soccer League's website, and they were talking about how Chattanooga FC has only conceded one goal this season. That's a big testament to their defense and their goalkeeper. So, easily one of the best uh, defenses in the conference, if not the whole league, with this Chattanooga side. And uh, that goal that they that they did give up, that was uh, a few weeks back, actually. It was against, I believe, it was Nashville. It was Nashville, yeah. And um, we were at that game. We were we were at that game, and uh, that was a very physical game, actually. Yeah, it was rough, and it was hard from our point of view because Nashville kits were very poorly designed. We couldn't see any numbers. Right. I mean. Uh, as, as Chattanooga clears this one. Bright jerseys are fun, but the numbers have to be readable. And uh, those weren't. Those were yellow yellow jerseys with, with white numbers. And if you want to pull off a bright shirt, look at Peachtree City for an example. They actually knew how to do their numbering right with black numbers on yellow shirt. So we're very thankful in the commentary booth for that. But yeah, Nashville was the only team to score in Chattanooga so far. And you were saying earlier that how these teams haven't met, but they actually have at Peachtree okay. earlier in the season. So that ended in a 2-0 win to Chattanooga. We're looking to repeat that here at home. And uh, Shaughnessy is going to have the ball here. Rosales is going to... Pass it back towards Jeff Shepard. And now on the far side of the box, the shot by Son of Lantern was going to roll towards out of bounds, but not actually out. And Peachtree City trying to counter here. A solid tackle. Lots of things early in this match. It really looks like Chattanooga, as we see a couple subs here, or a single sub, excuse me. It looks like Chattanooga is really trying to open things up through their wingers. With, I believe it was Summer Lancer and Sam Davian being very quick and playing very high on the wings. It looks like Chattanooga is trying to beat the ball through them and get a cross in rather than just a shot from the middle. And Chattanooga now defending. Megan Hudgens forcing the issue and Shaughnessy is going to block it but it's not cleared. This one finally bounces out of bounds. It'll be a Peachtree City throw in but a dangerous situation for Chattanooga FC. Time the ball's bouncing around inside like that. And now checking into the game will be Ashley Thomas for Peach Tree City. Going across center field now to Thomas. Pass goes by Katie Hickman. Hickman able to run it down. It's poked out of bounds by Anna Lancer. And Lancer getting in the middle of that one and trying to break it up. And that's a Chattanooga FC throw in as it bounced it off of Alexa Barr. Of Peachtree City. Yeah, and that ball was looking for her as a passing target, which I don't blame Peachtree for. She's currently their top scorer for the team with two goals to her name, and 
probably very hungry to get some more tonight. So I would see her as being a very big attacking threat for Chattanooga. Or against Chattanooga, rather, sorry. Hickman runs this one down. She's defended by Lancer and Maddie Ricketts. Cass Wade gets this one back to Anna Lancer and the Chattanooga counter incoming. Lancer with the through ball that rolls to the goal just a bit in front. This one's kicked all the way to midfield. Anna Lanter defending. Now Thomas working the far sideline and Summer Lanter is able to steal it. And Jess Shepard controlling action in the middle. Shaughnessy. And this kick over the top. Davian trying to run it down. Not able to get there in time. This will be a goal kick for Peachtree City. But like you said, the use of trying to, to get the, the passes out to the wings. I'm kind of surprised they're going for that type of tactic with the field condition as it is. Because an overtop ball is difficult to play regardless and to have it bounce right and weight it right and everything. With the surface, even if you play the perfect overtop ball, it's hard to get that bounce just right and the weight just right so that it still falls to the player running onto it as we've seen so far tonight with the overhit balls by Chattanooga. Checking into the game, by the way, Ashley Cade, number 10, and Mia Hollingsworth, number 19. As Peachtree City pushing the issue here with the ball bouncing off of Jess Shepard, the back of her leg. Hollingsworth on the near sideline, and it's forced out of bounds by Allison Hale of Peachtree City. So Hollingsworth to throw this one in. Maddie Ricketts over to Anna Lanter. She's gonna put this one over the top again. Well defended by Peachtree City. And Alexa Barr kicking it too far ahead. So this will be a Chattanooga throw in. Hollingsworth is running over to do the duties. She hands it off to Ashley Cade. Looks like they're looking for a long throw here out of the back. Does the, does the slickness of the ball affect how you play the game at all? Uh, especially on throws and stuff, yes. As you saw um, there, Kate was wiping the ball off in her shirt, and a lot of players will end up doing that before they throw it so they can actually grip it. And usually the balls, when they're slick, it's hard to grip with the cleats as well. So you will see a lot of players, when they try to go for a curling shot, it won't come off as much as it would any other time because of the ball slickness. And that pass over the top bounces long and into the keeper's arms. Chattanooga trying to maintain possession. And Carly Banks was offsides. Lancer 
comes up away comes away with it. But Peachtree City able to get it back quickly. Pass over to Allison Hale. Hale pushes it ahead, but it's broken up by Hollingsworth. Davian trying to find some room. To Shepard. And then back to Caitlin Hayes. Hollingsworth trying to work the sideline. A little too close. Peachtree City to throw in. Ashlyn Bass. And uh, checking into the game now, Anya Dumasic. This one's pushed out of bounds, and it'll be Cazette Morche and Chattanooga FC with a goal kick. 19 minutes left to play in the first half. Score is still tied at zero. Morche getting it out to Caitlin Hayes. Hayes to Hollingsworth, and Hollingsworth pushed off the ball. Peachtree City is going to reset. And there is a little bit of reason to worry there in the box, but Morshe able to come up with it. She originally stepped out to kick it, and it just hit her foot and went sideways. Yeah, that's a, a very odd error for her especially to make, and a very rare one to see happen for any goalkeeper. Clever header ahead to Carly Banks, and Banks is going to shoot it from about 25 yards away. Yeah, she saw the goalkeeper off the, her line just a tad bit, and she went for it, and what an effort it was, finding the front post towards us, slide netting, corner, perfect shot from that angle, and a beautiful goal. And that's having an attacker's mentality, and Carly Banks has been pretty active all day, especially putting pressure on that goalie, and it's nice to see her hard work paid off there. Yeah, and she has been pressing forward a lot, and putting pressure on that whole back line and the goalkeeper for when, like, especially during passes like that, it's really good to have a forward doing that because it makes the defenders a bit nervous. They make a careless, heavy touch, and then you're on the ball. So, good work by Carly Banks there, and a lovely strike to pay off for it. And I and I missed who actually made the pass, but the pass was a header, and it was perfect as well. So. 16 minutes left to go here in the first half of action, and Carly Banks is your goal scorer. One to zero, Chattanooga FC women over Peachtree City MOBA. And now this one's going to go over the top to Ashley Cade. She's not gonna be able to get there in time. This will be a goal kick for Peachtree City. going to be hard for Peachtree City to score. They just haven't had the ball as much and they've had far fewer opportunities. And the whole prospect of opportunity is interesting when looking at the two teams because to me it seems like Peachtree City's honestly had the easier chances in front of goal. They've had good passing in front of goal. They've had a couple mistakes by the defenders and the goalkeeper, but they haven't been able to capitalize. Whereas Carly Banks, in a position you normally wouldn't call a opportunity to score, 
puts one in the back of the net. So really it's more of Chattanooga seeing everything as an opportunity rather than creating actual goal scoring opportunities. Which I think is a testament to uh, especially those forwards, Carly Banks and Sam Davy, and just how fast they are. They're, they always put pressure on any back line that has to figure out how to stop them. Yeah, and they have that very go forward, score goal mentality. And I would say Carly Banks is very happy with her strike, but I don't think that's the last one she wants to get tonight. And you probably will see a lot more of her on the ball and maybe even another goal or two by the end of the match. Throw in for Peachtree City here. And they're going to, that's really as close to another opportunity as they've gotten in a, in a little bit. Davian working the middle of the field. And pass intended for Cade, taken away by Ashlyn Bass of Peachtree City. But the defense for Chattanooga holding. And pass deflected, but Kate is able to get it on the near sideline, working her way inside. And she was trying to find Carly Banks again. She almost had herself a goal there, though. Just curled a tad wide of the far post. And that might be due to ball slickness, as you mentioned earlier. Because of the fact the ball is slippery, especially from the moisture on the surface, maybe she was trying to curl that in back post and just miscued it a bit. And the ball didn't come off the way it wanted, or she wanted it to because of the fact that it was slick. But it also might have been a back post run cross. We'll never know because we're not in the heads of the forwards, but I would I would say it was a goal, or it was a shot, but if it ended up becoming an assist, you would take the assist and call it a pass. At that, at that point, just with how uh, close Carly Banks was, it may be a little too close to tell. Uh, checking into the game is Kamala Mustafa for Peachtree City. This will be a Chattanooga throw. Peachtree City trying to get some some more legs out there on the field and see if they can create a spark of offense. And this will be a throw in for Chattanooga again. Anna Lanter will throw it. Shaughnessy was not able to get there in time and she works hard and nearly takes it back time winding down here the near the end of the first half. 11.40 to go. 1-0 to zero is your score. Chattanooga FC with the lead. Carly Banks scoring with 17 minutes left to go in the half. Cosette Morche getting the save there. A big save that was. There was a lot of yellow shirts in the box and a very good ball played in. Morche was on her game though and collected it with ease and it's good for Chattanooga to have a goalkeeper with that much confidence coming out collecting a ball like that. And uh, we mentioned earlier before she had one of her rare errors and that was one of the best chances that Peachtree City had to score. She's not going to give you too many of those. No, and I say she'll go into the locker room beating herself up about it a tad bit but also pretty happy as she has kept a clean sheet so far in this game. And 
Summer Lanter was dispossessed there in the box. She she was trying to get in scoring position. Emily Ober checking in for Peachtree City and for Chattanooga FC, Katie Dirksy, number 21. Hollingsworth waits to collect it patiently, opens up a counter for Chattanooga, kicks it out to Ashley Cade on the near sideline. Cade trying to work it in and earns a corner for Chattanooga FC. Kick this one in. And this one's going to be overkicked, run down by Banks. She's not able to get there in time. Peachtree City trying to move the ball, but it's taken away. Looks like by. Emily Sadler. And the pass up ahead for Mustafa. Too far. Summer Lanter trying to find some breathing room. And she gets it, crosses this one in, and it's well defended by Charlotte McCormick for Peachtree City. She's gonna kick this one well beyond the midfield mark. The Chattanooga's defense taking the ball back again. Very good is Chattanooga FC at taking the ball away and turning defense into instant offense. Yeah, having a good transition team like that is very beneficial, especially in a quick-paced game as Chattanooga likes to play. They can transition from that defense to offense very quickly, and they do it very well. And that leads to a lot of chances up front. And I believe this is... They're up 1-0 at the moment, but I do not think that's going to be the only goal scored in this match by any means. I see, especially with the pressure and the attacking mindset that Chattanooga's had, I see a couple more goals at least in the future for Chattanooga. Rosales is going to get this one. She's going to push it up ahead to Cade, and Cade's going to have a good opportunity here. She crosses it back. Banks has to turn around and run it back. And it's taken away from her, the pass behind her by just a hair. Chattanooga will kick this one out of bounds. It will be a throw for Peachtree City. Ashley Thomas will throw this one in. Chattanooga FC trying to defend, getting behind the Chattanooga FC defense, Anya Dumasic. And that will be a goal kick for Chattanooga. Five minutes and 50 seconds left in the first half. One to zero, Chattanooga FC leading Peachtree City MOBA. After the late start to this game, 
where we had a few rain delays, we had a few lightning delays, and we finally got underway. Pat crossfield pass to Hollingsworth. Works out, she's being run down. And it bounces off of the leg of Ashlyn Bass. Again, Chattanooga looking for that ball, that through ball up the wings, trying to release their wingers and get a ball back played into the box, which has worked pretty well so far for Chattanooga creating chances wise. Peachtree City reversing the field on this one and they're pushing it up ahead. That will be very well defended by Hayes. And Rosales with the nifty pass to give Chattanooga possession there. Good pass to Cade. She's able to get there. Another opportunity for Chattanooga. And it's knocked out of bounds, taken from the feet of Cade. It'll be Bass kicking it out of bounds, and so it'll be a corner for Chattanooga FC. There is Rosales playing another perfectly played ball. She just does that so well from the midfield, create, or creating chances from her passes. And we nearly saw another great opportunity for Chattanooga there. And this one's bouncing up in the air. Chattanooga still has a chance. Hayes is going to fire it in. It's blocked. This one's rolling away. And that looked to be kicked away by Megan Hudgens of Peachtree City. Back to Hayes. Gets it over to Hollingsworth. And the passing of Chattanooga. To get some space. And the pass is turned over. Taken away by Peach Tree City. Alexa Barr. Barr's going to kick that one. It's going to bounce off of Katie Dirksy. And Anna Lanter is going to kick that one back to Cosette Morche. bringing this one up towards midfield. Trying to get it through to Cade. She gets it on the second effort. But Cade was not expecting it, and it's going to roll out of bounds. I believe Cade thought she was offside there, stopping her run a bit early so that um, Peachtree City doesn't win a free kick and giving one of her other forwards an opportunity to get on the ball instead of her giving away a free kick in that area. Alexa Barr heading towards the net, defended by Maddie Ricketts. And on the far sideline, Ashley Thomas is gonna kick it ahead. Chattanooga's defense Getting pressure now from Dumasic. Dumasic back to Mustafa. And that one's knocked away by Dirksy. Chattanooga FC has got the ball. Ashley Cade works it over to Rosales. Now a mad midfield of Chattanooga FC. Can get this one ahead to Ashley Cade. She's going to have a chance. McCormick scoops it up. Two minutes left to go here in the first half of play. Charlotte McCormick and Peachtree Peach City MOBA. Rosales comes up with it. gets control of it, she moves it over to Cade, it's poked away 
by Emily Ober of Peachtree City. Rosales working midfield. And keeping it in bounds with the effort is Hollingsworth. Cade not able to handle it. And this is when, uh, where you, what you meant with the slickness of the surface. The ball has taken a few bounces that are pretty unpredictable. Right, and with artificial ground being a near perfect surface to play on, it doesn't have the mole hills and the other little bits and bumps as normal or, or regular grass does. But it does add a bit of a bounciness to the ball, and then that paired with the slickness of the pitch at the moment, causes some odd bouncing as you'd see on the natural ground surface. Trying to use that spacing to their advantage of Peachtree City. And that'll be it. That's the end of the first half here at Finley Stadium, downtown Chattanooga. Chattanooga FC leading this one 1-0. One to zero. Alex, what have you seen out there for the first half? I've seen some very good attacking chances created by both teams and a lot of good defending as well. And a very opportun or oppor yeah, opportunistic shot by... I believe it was Carly Banks scoring the lone goal. And I believe that the offense will continue into the second half for Chattanooga, and we'll see a lot more goals to come. I'm Keon Rose. Alongside me is Alex Poulon, and we will be bringing you the second half here in a little bit. So you can stand up, walk around, stretch your legs, and we'll see you here in the second half. to Finley Stadium here in downtown Chattanooga. We're starting the second half of the Chattanooga FC women's match against Peachtree City MOBA. Chattanooga FC started the game with the ball and so Peachtree City MOBA will start the second half in possession and they will be flipping sides. They started the game pretty late tonight so the sun was not a factor in goal. So no real advantage gained here necessarily. Chattanooga FC leading this one, 1-0. One to zero. Your lone goal scorer of the game, Carly Banks, with 17 minutes to go in the first half with a beautiful shot from about 20 yards out. Chattanooga's defense looking pretty aggressive here to start the second half. We'll see if Peachtree City MOBA can get anything going here in the second half or if Chattanooga will continue to dominate while the scoreboard is only 1-0. to zero. Chattanooga's had the ball for so much longer and has had so many more quality opportunities than Peachtree City. And Cazette Morche is going to handle this one, get the ball back into play. And Atlanta looking for room. And that one's going to get away from Alexa Barr. Chattanooga FC is going to take it back. And Shaughnessy on the far sideline. Resets to Morshe, who's going to get this one close to midfield. So it looks like Peach Tree City MOBA is determined to have the ball for much longer in the second half. Yeah, they're starting to really focus a lot on their possession game. Instead of playing that 
extremely attacking, aggressive play style. It looks like they're trying to drop back and pass the ball around, keep it away from Chattanooga, but not extremely successful, especially not as successful as Chattanooga in the first half at doing that. So it'll be interesting to see how that helps or hurts them later on this match. And it's interesting because uh, Chattanooga was playing a more direct style. They weren't necessarily playing a possession style, but they wound up having the ball more anyway. Right, and that just really goes to show how good this Chattanooga team is. They're playing direct, and they're still out-possessing a team that's playing a possession-based game, which is insane, statistically speaking. Carly Banks looking very dangerous there in front of the net. Just wasn't able to get the handle on it, but it's going to be a throw-in for Chattanooga. Ashley Cade. Trying to throw this one deep and use it like a corner. And Peachtree City getting this one back. Alexa Barr with the defense. Morshay is going to step up. Get it to Maddie Ricketts. And a good attack here from Peachtree City. And it's well defended by Ricketts. And Shaughnessy just takes the ball away. And this will be a throw in for Chattanooga FC. So good defense from Chattanooga, even though Peachtree City with the numbers there and an opportunity to score. Yeah, and this Chattanooga defense is very, very solid. And they only conceded one goal this entire season so far, which may not sound like a big deal to some people, but anyone who follows soccer and knows the American way of playing soccer is very attacking, a lot of goals scored, and to only concede one this whole season in four matches it's a very big testament to how good this back line for Chattanooga really is. And that one goal given up through five games. Running this one down is Maddie Ricketts. This one goes over the top to Morshe. Carly Banks pushed in the back. And the foul will actually be called for the push against Melanie McCoy of Peachtree City. So the first push not called, but the second one is. Yeah, fans were very, very unhappy with that call. And as it should be, because it was pretty unfair from our look at it. First, the first foul should have been called, wasn't. And the second foul was called for the same exact thing. So, hard position to be in, being a referee, but and I have to say the fans' disgruntlement is not uncalled for. Checking into the game, by the way, number 34 for Chattanooga FC, Mai Sakuma. Pressure being put on Chattanooga FC. The defense making it hard. And this will be a corner for Peachtree City. And Peachtree City have came out very attacking this half. They have created a lot more chances than Chattanooga this half and are looking very hungry to score a goal here. But with the Chattanooga back line, and we're saying goal. That's going to be a very, very big task. And Chattanooga clears this one. And 
Carly Banks working in traffic. She gets this one up ahead to Davian. Davian's pass catches Rosales off guard. Peachtree City with another look at this one. Alexa Barr is the aggressor so far. And the tackle, nothing's called on it. It's clean. Yeah, and that was the right call for the ref in that situation. The defender got almost all ball and just kind of caught the forward and the follow through. And for any ref, that is a easy no call. So good on him for that one. Rosales on the far sideline. She's going to work this one back in. Carly Banks applying pressure like she did in the first half. And it's still in bounds. Yeah, Chattanooga players jogging like they thought it was out and the whistle wasn't blown. 37 minutes to go here in the game. Chattanooga FC leading 1-0 over Peachtree City MOBA. Something that's really kind of shocked me so far this match is the like there's not been a very large amount of subs for Chattanooga FC and they've only played last Friday. So a couple of days ago they were in a match against Nashville at Nashville and they've come back today, two days later and it played very solidly without a lot of subs. And I will say that I think this is a, a very well-conditioned team, possibly because they do play in the heat, and this is actually much nicer than what they usually play in. Yeah. My Sakuma here coming up. I, I see that as a very solid point, because it is a lot cooler tonight with the rainfall earlier, and the delays because of the storms and stuff. It's cooled down the temperature. They're playing at night instead of their normal 6 o'clock kickoff. It was at 8, which it's got time to drop down in temperature. And it does play a factor into how much they can run and play in this kind of weather, opposed to a very warm game as we're used to having. in for Peachtree City. They move the ball around to try and get upfield, throwing it in for Peachtree City's Anya Dumasic. And Sakuma will come out and Hollingsworth will come in. Rosales starting a run here for Chattanooga. Bounces a bit too far ahead. But the pass to the sideline by McCormick is going to go out of bounds. It'll be a Chattanooga throw. Passes going just a little bit wide for Chattanooga. Peachtree City coming the other way. Megan Hudgens in the corner. Moshe steps up and makes the save. And this pass ahead to Cade. He's going to have to run it down. Peachtree City is able to get it back to McCormick and reset.
33 minutes to go here in the half. 1-0 to zero is still your score. Carly Banks, the lone scorer in the match. Chattanooga throw. Yeah, I'll say that throw was one due to the pressure that Chattanooga forwards were putting on the back line and the goalkeeper. It looked like the goalkeeper just didn't have any more options there. It was a great attack there. Shaughnessy's going to fire and will roll wide left of the goal. It's the corner though, so it did take a deflection off of someone, one of the defenders. So I believe that it, it went off of Melanie McCoy of Peachtree City. Hit her leg. Either way though, very, very good attempt and a good effort by Shaughnessy getting that shot off. She had to almost turn a full circle just to hit the ball well and she almost put it in the back of the net. And the header rolls in. I think it's an own goal. But Shaughnessy celebrating, so it might be hers. But either way, the header gave them the opportunity to score. Chattanooga FC going up two to zero with 32 minutes left to go in the first half. Okay, the goal is credited to Caitlin Hayes. And Hayes had the right idea with that, winning that header, putting it back across the face of goal, even if it wasn't to go in. She would have had, or she created another very, very good opportunity just by doing that. And fortunately for Chattanooga, but unfortunately for Peachtree City, the ball just hitting off a defender, going into the back of the net. Unfortunate goal for the, or unfortunate own goal for them, but great goal for Chattanooga. And like you said, she had players around that had that not gone in. Lizzie Shaughnessy, who was also celebrating there, she was right there as well. So just getting her head on that ball gave it a chance to go in. This is going to be a corner for Peachtree City. As the ball bounced off the leg of Maddie Ricketts. And a brilliant defensive play by Chattanooga sliding in Caitlin Hayes using her head on the defensive end. That was a big play there. If she did miss that ball and didn't defend it well, at, or didn't defend it at all, that was an easy attacking chance and most likely a goal from that close and that angle for Peachtree City. Peachtree City with another good opportunity and Cazette Morche swallows it up. We talk about how improved this back line is, and, and really one of the reasons why Chattanooga FC is undefeated so far this season and hoping to remain undefeated has been the play of this back line and the play of Morche. And that one's going to hit the outside of the net. It was offsides anyway, which I think Morche got a touch to that as well. So just as you were talking about how good this back line and Morche R for Chattanooga, she comes up with, if it wasn't flagged off sides, a massive save one-on-one. -on -one. And I believe Morche was part of the championship winning squad for Texas A&M in their season in the fall of last year, I believe. And it just shows how good she is. She's out here playing for Chattanooga, making really good saves, keeping clean sheets through a lot of the matches, only conceding one goal so far. So her plus the class of the back four for Chattanooga led to a lot of success. And like you've said, I believe they are also a credit to the um, 
perfect season uh, Chattanooga's team is having so far. And checking into the game for Chattanooga, Hannah Deering is coming into the game. And uh, the throw in by Ashley Thomas is knocked immediately out of bounds, so Peachtree City will throw this one in again. Carly Banks trying to get her foot on it. Peachtree City comes up with it. And it bounces off of the foot of Anya Dumasich. And physical body play lead to a kick here for Peachtree City. 27 minutes left to go in the game. 2-0 is now your score. Caitlin Hayes and Carly Banks are your goal scorers in the game. And Cazette Morche arriving to the ball in time again. Peachtree City creating a few more dangerous opportunities for themselves here in the second half. Yeah, and that one was extremely dangerous. And Morche, as easy as she made it look, that was a very, very big save. There was about four or five yellow shirts behind the CFC back line and Morche managed to stay calm and defend it well, gathering the ball up and making a very good save and denying a possible goal easily. And that ball is going to go too far ahead. Pass intended for Ashlyn Bass. A good goal kick for Cazette Morche and Chattanooga FC. Have a re-kick here. Ball didn't go all the way out of the 18, which is an area you don't see too much either. And the pass is too far ahead, but it's run down by Peachtree City. They're going to go to work on the far sideline. And McCormick will boot this one to the far sideline midfield. And Hayes will run it down. And it will be a kick for Chattanooga as Hayes was pushed out. Anna Lancer loses her footing. And the ball, Peachtree City, back in scoring position. And the through ball is just out of the reach of Dumasich. Chattanooga's defense stepping up big and making some huge plays. 2-0 is your score. Chattanooga FC leading Peachtree City MOBA with 24 minutes left in the game. Chattanooga clears another dangerous run. Rosales gets it to Shaughnessy. Shaughnessy tried to get it up ahead to Banks. But Chattanooga earns a throw in. So coming in will be Katie Dirksy, number 21, and number 23, Emily Sadler. Number 
Henry Veronica Kappas coming in for Peachtree City. Chattanooga hasn't had the ball as long as Peachtree City, but with fewer opportunities, they've still managed to score yet another goal here in the second half. And Chattanooga's always been, from what I've seen, very good on the set pieces and the counterattacks, as we see right here. A very good one. Shaughnessy tried to get it back to Rosales. And Rosales' pass goes behind Hannah Deering. Peachtree City's able to get it. Megan Hudgens crosses the front of the goal, and this one's knocked out of bounds by Mia Hollingsworth. It'll be a corner for Peachtree City. It looked there like uh, Hollingsworth just didn't know exactly how much time she had. She had a lot of time. The player was pretty far off. She could have turned, cleared it upfield, but instead playing it safe, putting it out of bounds. It causes a corner, but Chattanooga's defense has been very good so far defending these set pieces. So I look to see a, another clearance here. And things are muddled up in the middle. Morshe able to get it and eventually lands on top of it. Morshe with a monster save with, a 20, with 21 minutes left to go in the game. Well, that was a very big save. And we were talking about how good she is earlier and that just shows how good she is she made that kind of save in that kind of situation a lot of bodies in front of the ball in front of goal a lot of uh, players there to capitalize on any mistakes she would have made and she just flexes it saves gets the ball back afterward great play by Moshe Shea trying to get this one back in play. Hollingsworth comes up with it. And this one bounces out of bounds. Peachtree City will throw in. Twenty minutes left to go in the game. Chattanooga FC leading two to zero. Carly Banks scoring with 17 left to go in the first half. Caitlin Hayes scoring with 32 in the second. And Hollingsworth is going to guide this one out of bounds for a Chattanooga goal kick. Gonzalez pass for Lanter falls short, but Shaughnessy's able to come up with it. She's going to try and get this one over the top to Banks. McCormick steps up off her line to try and keep Chattanooga away from the box. Now Peachtree City is going to counter. Good pass up ahead, but not able to handle it. Like number nine, Alexa Barr. Just wasn't able to hang on to the pass. And I believe you mentioned earlier this half, it looks like Peachtree City have had the majority of the attacking chances so far this half. With a lot of opportunities in front of the net, but According to the score line, Chattanooga has just been a bit more clinical with their finishing and on their opportunities they've created. And Rosales is able to try and reel this one in. And that will be a kick for Peachtree City. And another pass up ahead. 
way ahead of the attacking player for another Chattanooga FC goal kick. So Chattanooga's defense making it very hard to track down some of these passes. And they're playing an offside trap as most teams at this level would. And they're playing it extremely well. The back line's sticking together well. They're holding their line well. And a lot of chances that would have been very dangerous for Peachtree City have been cut out because of the fact that they've been flagged off sides. So credit to Chattanooga's defense for playing high levels of defense like that, as well as just the really good defenses they usually play on the ball as well. And this one's going to bounce off of Dirksy. Peach Tree City throw in. And Ashley Cade able to get it over to Hollingsworth, who's coming up from the back. Hollingsworth gets behind the defense. It's poked away from behind, but she still tracks it down and it's kicked out of bounds by Peachtree City for a Chattanooga throw. Ashley Cade will be doing the throw in. Yeah, she is their go to person for a long throw in. She's going to look to put this one inside the box and create a essentially free kick esque uh, effort off of this. And this one bounces back towards Haley Nichols. And the cross, Nichols gets it on her head, right at the goal, saved by Charlotte McCormick. And it was good awareness there by Nichols to get her head on that and head it toward goal. And on frame, just the goalkeeper for Peachtree City being in the right space at the right time, making an easy save there. And the defense of Chattanooga stopping the offense of Peachtree City in its tracks. Hollingsworth tracks it at the far sideline. And Lanter, near sideline midfield, tries to punch it up ahead to Davian. And a kick here for Peachtree City looked like a handball from here. And it was a bit delayed by the linesman to call that, but I think that was the right call. It looked like it bounced off her forearm, and she used that to control the ball. Not intentionally, but from our angle, it looked that way anyway. So I'll say good call on that one by the refs. I agree with you on that one. Jess Shepard, number three, checks back into the game for Chattanooga FC. One of the differences in the men's game and the women's game is that the substitutions for the women are unlimited. And I think the idea of having unlimited subs is a good thing, especially for this Chattanooga team that's played only two nights ago. They can get their players that they want on the field rested. And, and here's a shot on goal that just goes high of the crossbar. So Chattanooga FC continuing to heap that pressure on Peach Tree City. Gets this one in play. And after bouncing around the middle of the field, this one will roll back to Morche. Chattanooga FC starting to hit their stride here offensively. 
Sam Davian has it. And now it's to Carly Banks, who scored once already today. It's well defended by Peachtree City. Shaughnessy on the near sideline. She's going to work this one back to Morshe to reset. Time in the game winding down. 13 minutes to go in the game. 2-0 to zero is your score. Chattanooga FC leading Peachtree City. And Shaughnessy's going to get behind it. She moves it out to the far side. And a shot on goal saved by McCormick. And on that attacking chance, it was very, very good uh, mindset for Carly Banks there. She just flicked the pass on to Shaughnessy's feet, knowing that she was in more space in that situation. And it nearly led to another Chattanooga goal. Physical play starting to heat up here. And the pass over to Lanter. She keeps it in play. Athletic move. Haley Nichols. Gets it over to the far sideline. Chanega is beginning to possess the ball a lot more now. And they're looking more like their first half team this second half now, even though there's only about 10 minutes left to play. You can see some of the substitutions now starting to help there. Chattanooga FC with the fresher legs. Morshay's going to kick this one out to midfield. It's taken in by Melanie McCoy. And that goal kick by Ashley Thomas with a shot on goal goes over the net. That was a very, very good effort there. It's rare to see a chance like that possible through this Chattanooga defense. It looks like they just broke down, switched off for a second, and on the ball there was number 19. It's Kamala Mustafa. Yeah, with that shot, good volleyed effort. Those are hard to hit, especially with the ball coming in straight from your side. So. Good on her to get her foot to that ball and get that much contact. As you see the refs waving on Marche here, trying to get her to speed things up. But Chanuga going to waste as much time as they can off this clock with his two goal lead. And here's another opportunity. That one flies behind Mustafa again. FC clearing this one back to midfield. Trying to burn clock here and come away with a victory. They've already won more games this season than they have in their last three seasons combined. So another victory will just add to that tally and continue them in the runnings as of the only undefeated and perfect season teams in the WPSL right now. There's about eight of them, and Chattanooga is one of them. So, looking for this win here, and so far, from the looks of things, if the scoreline stays the same, it will end up in a Chattanooga win. Lanter gets it to Rosales. Rosales directing traffic. 
gets it up ahead to Sadler, and Rosales is going to get it to Banks now. Flagged off sides, though. Just a little too eager. She wanted her second goal of the game. Right. Eight minutes and 18 seconds to go in the game. Two to zero, Chattanooga FC over Peachtree City. I really like the confidence Chattanooga is playing with right now. Saw Rosales get in the middle and use a bit of skill to get past a couple defenders, even making one fall over there in the midfield. And it's good to see that Chattanooga have that confidence on the ball. And they can do creative things like that because of the fact that they're up to, you know, they have a cushioned lead and they're playing like they have a cushioned lead, playing confidently, and they're still creating attacking chances even this late into the match. Checking back into the game for Peachtree City is Anya Dumasic. And Chattanooga is able to take the ball from Peachtree City, intercepting that pass. Jess Shepard. take that one back was Rosales but she wasn't able to keep it in play. Peach Tree City will throw in. And gaining possession of the ball is Caitlin Hayes. She looked like she was trying to play that off of Alexa Barr there, just miscued a tad bit, playing it out of bounds for a P Street 3 throw. On the throw for Peachtree City, Melanie McCoy. And Mia Hollingsworth is able to come up with it. And Ashley Cade earns a throw in for Chattanooga. And some good passing here from Chattanooga. Keep it away from Peach Tree City. And that would be kicked out of bounds by Kelly McKay. So Chattanooga's going to get another throw in here. And it looks like Carly Banks was flagged offside again. Yeah, over and back run there. She just got right past the defense. When the ball was kicked, she was past the defense and then ran back on size to gather the ball and that's still off size according to the rules. Sam Davian is tripped and it'll be a kick for Chattanooga in a pretty decent spot. The rest really allow a lot of physical play so far tonight though which is interesting to me there's not been a lot of free kicks called and the ones that are called are for very blatant fouls as opposed to the little pushes and shoves in the headers or on field tackles so it's interesting the ref has let a lot of the physical play go on as this has became a pretty physical match charlotte mccormick with the save from off the header from Carly Banks. And yeah, I, I think that the players have done a very good job of not taking advantage of that because that tends to happen when refs let players play. Um, but this game was never in danger of getting out of control, so I think that was a good decision by the referees. 
And you mentioned the whole out of control situation. I believe if this game did start getting out of hand, a lot more fouls would be called. But like you said, a lot of or both teams have been very controlled in their tackles. It's not been extremely physical. They haven't taken advantage of the refs lack of calls. So yeah, I, I believe it's the right decision for him to not call as much and just let the game flow more naturally. Because a lot of calls does interrupt the flow and the flowing game is the best to watch in my opinion. So it's nice to see the ref understand that aspect of the game very well and allowing these plays to go on. I mean, all the refs would just call the initial foul. Maddie Ricketts earning Chattanooga FC a throw-in. Carly Banks with the header to Davian. Davian's behind the defense. And the Ashley Cade shot is blocked, but Rosales comes up behind it. She's going to play it in, and it bounces off the head of Banks. Dangerous. Great passing and great offense by Chattanooga. Yeah, and the initial attack there led by Davian is very, very good run getting around the defender. Defender just shoved her off the ball at, in the end, falls to another Chattanooga player, and then eventually out to Rosales, who makes a beautiful pass, as she usually does, and Two. almost resulted in another goal. Two minutes left to go here in the game. Shouldn't be very much stoppage time, because as we mentioned before, not a whole lot of fouls were called, and we didn't have any injured players. Two to zero is your score. Chattanooga FC over Peachtree City. It'll be a throw in for Chattanooga FC. quickly gets this one into play. Peachtree City trying to score here, feeling the pressure of the match. And more Shea. Kicks this one beyond midfield and Banks plays it all the way back to McCormick. Chattanooga now are going to look to possess the ball a lot and just make sure Peachtree City doesn't get any more attacking chances and any throw in or free kick or save made by Moshe is going to take a long time to be played back into the field here. Peachtree City is going to try and take their opportunity of a kick to make something happen. Chattanooga's defense is there. Anna Lanter with all the pressure. And Rosales gets this one up ahead. Banks lost track of it in the air. It'll be a Peachtree City throw. As far as added time goes by the ref, I don't see there being a lot of it this game. It's been very flowy and very clean. Not a lot of fouls, not a lot of stoppages, so I'd say we're very limited on added time here. Peachtree City not able to get behind Chattanooga's defense. And Rosales gets it up to Davian. Davian pushes it up ahead to Banks, and that's going to be way over her head. And that was a good run by Banks. And then Davian played the ball a bit closer to Banks with the same sort of 
play as she just did the curling ball in. I believe that could have resulted in a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, which would have been very good for Chattanooga, and could have easily saw Banks grab her second goal of the night. And that's all she wrote. You're listening to Chattanooga FC Soccer. Here we are downtown Chattanooga at Finley Stadium. Chattanooga FC winning this game over Peachtree City MOBA by a score of 2-0. to zero. Carly Banks scoring the first goal with 17 minutes left to go in the first half. And Caitlin Hayes scoring the second goal with 32 minutes to go in the second half to give Chattanooga FC the win. Chattanooga's defense was really good and on top of things because Ed Morche had a great game. Uh, Alex, what are your final thoughts of today's game? Uh, I agree with everything you just said about the defense. They played very well defensively. Morshe's played very well in goal and kept a clean sheet, which is always nice to see if you're a Chattanooga fan. And not only that, the win tonight propels them to five wins, zero losses, and zero ties. Continuing that perfect season, being one of only, I believe, six teams to have a perfect season in the WPSL. So Chattanooga right now have to be really, really happy with themselves. I believe they've created a lot of attacking chances. They've done well to convert the attacking chances they did create. And I believe they're going to carry those momentum into their next match, which is against, or at Memphis. And I hope... To see them continue this score or this winning run, and I believe they'll want to do the same. They've done a very good job, and you mentioned earlier in the game that they've won more games this year than they did in the previous three years combined. And sometimes things just come together. You finally put together the right team, and you can see what that looks like. This is a team that's playing with a lot of confidence. We've seen them make a number of incredible plays. But thank you for joining us here today down at Finley Stadium, Chattanooga FC Women's Soccer. The women getting the win 2-0 over Peachtree City MOBA. Have a happy Father's Day and enjoy the rest of your night. And we'll see you next time down here at Finley Stadium for Chattanooga FC Women's Soccer. I'm Keon Rose alongside Alex Poulon wishing you all a good night.